で。Let all the rest dissolve by the lack of your attention. So good morning once again. <clears throat> Just reminding you that we use WhatsApp. You can send your questions, they come directly to me. The number appears on the comments.
So if you have been exposed to spiritual teachings, it means it's time for you to know. <clears throat> to know that you are a prisoner. And it's a different vision from what is commonly seen as life. Because it is seen as an adventure, a sea of possibilities, where you can be whatever you want, whatever you can, and that there is a future, there's something to do here, there's all these nuances, different ones, full of potential. And that may be true at a microscopic level, a very closed, ignorant perspective. Because whatever is there, whatever you're living, it doesn't even come close to your real nature, to who you really are. And only by being deprived of that, encircled in illusion, what you call reality, in your reality, it is a source of tremendous pain. So those who get the calling It means it is time to go home, to go back. And for that, you need to take things as they are and not how they are painted. You see, in physical prisons, you have bars around you, walls, that limit where your body can go. But this prison is different because it is in your mind, the mind. And the prison bars are the beliefs that are there supported by perceptions, mistaken perceptions, of course, not, even, not just for, uh, mistaken, but the possible perceptions. And eventually, as we know this, you will have to make a decision. If you are seeking clarity, for example, either you surrender to the life in prison, but you know that you're in prison, or you try to escape. Those who try to, ex to escape the prison, they usually tend to trust in the prison guards to help them get away. not realizing that the prison guards, the mind, the senses, are there to keep you in prison. So those who have thirst for freedom as they realize that they're in a prison they will stop at nothing to be free they will fail many many countless times and more and more they will learn that that's not failure that is learning process that is knowing the prison, knowing the rules of the prison, knowing the mechanisms of the prison, 
And the more he knows, the better he can go around them. But it is a prison. Those who have the calling and surrender themselves to the prison, they are not even worth mentioning. Everybody has what it takes. But not everyone is willing to go that extra mile. So that prison is still a better option. So it doesn't count because, well, this is for seekers of truth, of liberation. So your beliefs, what you call your beliefs, the beliefs that are, that make up the world that you experience, the perceptions you get, the interpretation of those same perceptions, what you call your hopes, your dreams, your nightmares, what your sources of aversion, of attraction, these are all the prison bars. These are there to keep you in check, in place, to keep you locked up, to keep you away from yourself. So for those who seek liberation, they will have to learn that this cannot be trusted. Good intentions are good, but not enough. By far, not enough. Because illusion has strong inbuilt mechanisms. Self-pity, one of them. Weakness, another one. But all of these are just perceptions. For those who are strong-minded and have practiced intense physical exercises, they have seen that, for example, as they push forward, Everything, all negativities, all sorts of neg negativities starts coming into the mind. Oh, I can't take this anymore. Uh, I already done enough. Uh, this is too much. And blah, 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 blah. Even at a, a physiological level, your body seems strained, tired. Your breath is just going uh, very fast. But if you can get a hold on your mind and you put in, I will continue no matter what. I will establish myself and go beyond this state. And if you persist, your body will adapt. Your breath will reduce and you will find stability. If you succumb, or if you really believe what is coming in your mind, you will stop and you will not see what was beyond. It is more or less the same principle. So these perceptions are there to constrict you at a certain level of what you call reality. And if you manage to go beyond this one, you will be entrapped in the next one. If you haven't understood the principles. Because if you can be kept here at this level, for example, being deprived 
of things that you want in an example and you finally are able to go beyond that maybe in the next one you will be constricted there by being given that which you were previously denied and when you are undergoing intense meditation usually I would say intense spiritual practices but these days it's more safe to say meditation as a spiritual practice because well certain practices are almost impossible for the majority even though they are spoken and said to be practiced by many many people but just that's well so we speak of meditation it's a fitting all as you undergo intense meditation intense spiritual practices negativities will arrive those are the prison guards some of them of course the need to give up will be there self-pity uh, acknowledgement of owned weakness all of this as a justification to stop with all of that Inside it will be felt like to go back to, to peace, but it's not. It is just for the preservation of that level of reality, of your level of a reality slash delusion. And if you trust all these impressions, you will fall. You should look at all these impressions that say it's not possible, you're not able to, this is, these are all lies. It is possible for anyone and everyone that really wants it. There is a path for all that persist. Those who give up, they give up. But for those who persist, even if it seems that there's no path, even if it takes almost an eternity, <coughs> a path will open up for those who don't quit. And there is that path for everyone. If you have an illusion, there is a way out of it. One not many, one. Your path. And you have to figure that out, that one out. And that will be through guidance. And guidance, real guidance, comes through real surrender. But there is. You just have to keep going. Despite whatever is coming in your mind, whatever emotions that you're experiencing, whatever sensations, whatever appearances, you have to keep going. Your spiritual practices cannot be connected to moods, to your mood. So if you're feeling full of hope, of positivity, then you continue if you're negative then you stop these are you're just still in the same in the same prison two steps forward two steps backward remaining in the same place and there's no way out of it no other way out of it so whatever you're doing that's not connected with liberation
eventually you will have to go through them. So in a way, if you already know this, then you're wasting time. If you don't know, well, it's not time yet. So the mind cannot, in any circumstance, be trusted. It is not a decision-making center. Cannot participate. It is something that you can use when it has become pure enough. Power corrupts the mind. And in this case, the power is to believe that the mind is me, is identity. That the mind is in charge. That the mind is there to make decisions. And with this power, corruption comes. Negativity, darkness. All of these things become reality, slash illusion. So the mind is something to be purified. <clears throat> and that happens through disempowerment, surrender, acknowledging this knows nothing. So if, no, if it knows nothing, what decisions can it make? It can obey the guidance and live the consequences of that. And that is purification. For those who have the calling, you are supposed to align yourself with this calling, to tune with this, to trust only in this. And you will see that your mind will be fighting this. Because you cannot do it, because is weak, because blah, blah, blah. So all these things, except if you say, I don't want. So you're not in prison. Well, you're in your home. You have made prison your home. And that's fine. And there's nothing to say about that. Apart from that, whatever comes, these are the obstacles. There's, these are not conclusions. They are, these are not um, something to abide to. These are the obstacles. Your feelings, your emotion, these are the obstacles. And it's not just the negative part. It's the positives also. Because whatever you fathom, whatever you... How do you say this? Um, fantasize about gains of liberation. These are all perceptions of gains, profits from this mistaken character. And he shall not pass. It is through his disappearance that liberation unfolds. So it, it shall not pass. So even the positivities connected to the path, they are like, people like to say, ego-based. And they are full of mistaken motivations. And they have to fall behind. And if the calling is there, it will be there when you're enthusiastic about liberation, when you're full of, ex, um, of hopes 
towards liberation, at the highest of your optimism, and it will still be there when you're full of negativities, when you're in desperation, it will still be there. And that is the beacon, the lighthouse. And if it's with this that you need to tune. But as motivations are still ego-based, you tend to give some steps towards liberation and some other steps to maintain illusion. It's an ongoing battle. But like the battle that I mentioned in some other satsang, the battle of Kurukshetra, Bhagavad Gita, it wasn't Arjun that was driving his car, his wagon. It was Krishna. It was guidance. Guidance was driving and exposing Arjuna to different different circumstances where he had to make difficult choices difficult why because they meant going beyond his prison beyond his beliefs going beyond what he thought was right and wrong because even your rights and wrongs they are your prison bars cell your prison bars alone he couldn't go he was limited by this but guidance was pointing the way because it comes from beyond your prison cell and it sees where you're entrapped so it gives you the circumstances you need to go beyond the fence but it will be difficult because that's what you believe that's those are the pillars of your world Of individual perception so guidance points the way mind follows the difficulty in the mind followings is its own greed and that's what needs to be purified so you follow and you pay the consequences going so far so far ahead that you leave all these things behind and it becomes impossible to turn back. Like the slaves that left Egypt, they spent 40 years in the desert. That means their prison, where they were slaves, became so distant, so distant, that they could not even think about turning back. And the promised land was nowhere to be seen, just desert. All the generations that left Egypt did not arrive to the promised land. They died, only the new generation. So with this character, everything was, which is conditioned to that level of reality slash delusion, shall not pass it will have to die during and that which is born moves forward whatever that means but at this level we can use these words so all these stories they speak about the same timeless adventure the same timeless sacred path towards God, towards liberation. For those who believe, who fill their hearts with faith, whatever you fill your heart with, that will shape, that will you live, that will you see. So if you're filling your mind with negativities, that's what you'll experience. 
if you fill your mind with optimism, with love, with devotion, that will reshape what you perceive as reality. So as the body gets stronger when it's exposed to physical intensity beyond that which it was used to, the body goes stronger because it is always transforming. So your instruments of perception, they are always changing, transforming according with the food that you are giving. Whatever you're observing, whatever you're touching, whatever you're eating, whatever you're listening, whatever you're smelling, I forgot that one. And also, whatever you're entertaining inside yourself, whatever emotions you are allowing there, mingling with, this is reshaping your perception. And this is the temple. You should only allow that which is the highest, that which honors the divine. The rest, even if present, you should shun it and try to embrace, to embrace the divine. There is a way out for everyone that doesn't give up. If you're associating with your weaknesses, well, what to do then? You are taking that as a reality. You could be taking something else. Everything is possible. You just have to embrace it hard. And for example, you have the calling. So you know it is possible. Even if your mind goes against it, the calling is there. So it's possible. If you fill yourself with hope, if you fill yourself with strength to follow that path, if you dedicate all you have and you still continue to do it after so many mistakes that you will learn after that they were mistakes and you'll continue your learning process, you are embracing liberation. But if you say, oh, but this is too hard, uh, I'm not strong enough, I can't do it, I have to contend myself with this. Eh, that's a nice speech. But at the end of the day, you're embracing illusion, strongly, desperately. Whatever you embrace becomes your destination. So knowledge is a little bit contradicting in the way that it is administrated because people tend to look at life as that place where they have infinite possibilities. But then in practical terms, there are things that are impossible. Liberation being one of them. Contradiction. Apart that, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, to do there. So, for example, if you look at the social media, you may be there looking for something that will help you to improve in some sense to help you to get better in some sense, to know things, to learn things, whatever it is. 
and it's supposed to make your life better. But that was not made for that purpose. The main thing is to keep you there, entertained, well entertained. But to keep you there. Similar. Liberation for those who really aspire for it. So your good and bads, they are also your prison cell bars. And they are there even to give you a choice. To see how much you really want it. So the, one, the things you consider bad, they are offering you, offering you a possibility to understand that you're in the prison so that you can aspire to transcend it. And your goods, they are also there playing two roles. One of them is to seduce you, to stay there so that you will have a choice. There's something to leave behind. Or else, where's the choice? But at the same time, when you become more mature, it is there also to incite you to transcend it. Because it is telling you that even though it is good, it doesn't come close to the aspiration of your heart. People tend to live their lives with their minds filled up with thoughts. They tend to call rational beings to themselves and, and to others that are similar. But this is very mistaken. There is noise there. These are not your thoughts. The, the thinking process is actually one of the most difficult things for the mind, for the brain itself. It's very tiring. It demands a lot of energy. So majority of the thoughts that you experience, it's not a free thinking process. It's filled with, with Conclusion, this, 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 this. No thinking process behind it. Because even physiological, physiologically, it's very demanding, burns a lot of energy, and you tend to resist that process. So whatever synapses are there built, so the thoughts move on that direction. Just conclusions. No thinking process, no real analytical process involved. And these are condition, conditionments. Maybe this word doesn't exist in English. These are the obstacles to really analyze things. to cross these, the wisdoms, the different wisdoms you have. Cross check them. But for those who are looking for freedom, really have this call for freedom, they will have to go through this. Especially because, well, the first part of it, it's difficult 
you don't have the purity and without the purity you don't have real devotion without real devotion you don't have surrender and without that you may have guidance present but you cannot embrace it as you should you're standing in the way and you will have to reflect on things and make decisions so in this first part you have to learn to think and that's much more difficult than you imagine Vou responder à tua pergunta. Ok. I will translate. Good morning. Hope you're doing fine. Yes, of course. I have a question for Satsang. In a past Satsang, you made the brief comment about the, the hazards of the feelings of guilt into the spiritual world. By listening to you, I start to wonder if the negativity that I've been living is due to the progress of the work or due to the feeling of guilt for not being able to meditate all the planned hours, for eating more sweets than I should, for thoughts and desires. Pardon me, I think this is... Um, okay. For different thoughts and desires, I can translate this in in English, among others. And it's curious that when I'm not feeling guilty enough, I'm feeling guilty not feeling guilty enough. In case you find it convenient, please help me understand better this distinction. Negativity for the guilt or as part of the work and how to deal with the guilt. Well, I have been talking about this during all satsang about the prison bars, the perceptions, guilt being another perception. And, but I have to go to another aspect here, which is being naive towards the spiritual work. So, first, you're completely abstracted from any spiritual work, just a worldly life, nothing else. Then, it's time for you to start that journey and you start it. So in the first moment, you will try to adapt that which is new to that which was to the old. You will try to transform that. And in certain th things you will be able to, others it will be difficult. But then the struggle, the battle unfolds. So new behaviors, new habits that you're trying to implement to make the shift will counter old habits. As you start meditating, your vibration will start to change a little bit, so the old vibration will want to come back and to assert itself. So other habits will be put in place to make the balance of this, to counter that which you're doing. And if you're in a slow motion if you haven't if you haven't understood yet that you're in a prison and those things are not there to make you feel better but are there actually to maintain your suffering if you don't know any of this then you'll be trapped in this two steps forward two steps backward and understand that even if you're full of compassion for yourself, which you call compassion, of course, but that's the kind of compassion that, for example, you look at your child, it has a piece of uh, a splinter, a big splinter into the leg, for example. And if you touch it, the child doesn't want you to touch. It will scream, no, don't touch it. So, okay, so I'll be filled with compassion for you, my son, and I will leave that there. I will just sprinkle something on top of it 
to keep it clean, but I will not touch it because I'm filled with compassion. And your child probably, that wound will infectionate and will have to be amputated. But no, we cannot amputate it because it will bring suffering to you. And I'm filled with compassion towards you. And eventually, that will compromise the rest of the body. And then the child will die. So what kind of compassion was that? The compassion that maintains suffering. Of course, removing that would bring suffering to the child. It would be painful. But it would be a pain that will help, help it to go to, to a healthy state and be able to live and enjoy and whatever. In the example, of course. Because it would be healthy and then it could be on the path for truth. But that's something else. So in this example, this is the kind of compassion that seekers tend to have with themselves. This is not really compassion. It's not clear. It's just delaying and causing, causing more suffering. So, causing more suffering and it is hoping and betting on frustration because you only see what's here in front of you. But these are long cycles. And in these cycles, you'll be tested. And if you don't do what, you, what needs to be done now and deal with it once and for all, eventually, and this is what your illusion wants, you will reach the conclusion that it's not possible, that you're not able to do it. And then it's more, much more difficult to deal with that. Not impossible, nothing is impossible, but much more difficult. If you've done what you had to do now, you wouldn't have that experience in the future. So in a way, your sabotage is making sure that you get frustrated and arrive to the conclusion that it's not possible for you. That's its main goal. And eventually that's what happens with the majority that starts the path in a serious way. These are the mechanics of illusion. So meditation. If you have decided this is the time I'm going to meditate. You need to do it. No matter what the price is. Because if you're giving in to meditation, if you're not making meditation, you're opening room to make something else, which is opposed to meditation, of course. And this is decision. And the devil and the angel will be there because there's the seeker, seeker of well-being, the devil, and the seeker of truth, the angel. One of them will be disappointed. One of them will suffer. Make sure that the right one is suffering. So when you're feeling guilt for not doing things, or when you're feeling guilty for not feeling guilty enough, this is the angel that is there. But in your reality, it is used to maintain that low vibration. But in that low vibration, Guilt is practically the only thing that can help you. If you're really a seeker of truth, because, because I've seen many, that they are just for the guilt. They use the quest for truth, for liberation, even with the calling there, but their mechanics is so strong that they use all of this just to feed the guilt. And what this means is, when they reach critical moments, they stop. Because the calling gate is there, if they didn't stop, they could transcend that. But they usually stop. 
And this is what makes the difference of a seeker of truth and a seeker of well-being. The seeker of truth doesn't stop. He may fall down, but he gets up again and he tries again and he tries again and again and again and again. But it's a different trying from the seeker of well-being. But let's not go into that now. <clears throat> and I will make this remark about for eating more sweets than it should. Well, the actual amount of sweets that it should be eaten is zero. But sometimes that's not possible. But that's the thing because when you're meditating intensely, you're changing the vibration. Then the conflict starts because your world depends on the other vibration. So it wants to get it back. How does it do that? By getting things that lowers vibration. To rise vibration, a lot of negative emotions have to be purged out. And as this process is unfolding, the part of you, the needy part of you, increases. Sweets come as uh, past energy and takes everything back to where it was. So the amount should be zero, of course. But if not possible, at least it should not be conditioned to mood swings. For example, I cannot be without sweets. Let's go, well, okay, let's, let's, I cannot be without sweets. Let's put that as a, a thing. So once a week I will have one small sweet. Despite the fact that I'm good or bad, it doesn't matter. Never, never condition to mood swings. And this is how you build up strength. The power, strength is the power not to be impressed. This is strength. And thoughts and feelings that are arising, they are there to make you go back to the same investments. So you cannot control this. But with meditation, you can purge them, asserting silence, not identifying with them. It's difficult. The seeker of truth, the seeker of well being says, Oh, it's difficult. The seeker of truth says, yes, it's difficult, but it's possible. Even if it's one in a million, it's possible. This is the distinction. So whatever thoughts are there, emotions, this is circumstantial only. There are barriers for you to transcend. Like the stairs. You transcend them and you move higher. This is why they're there. So the discipline of the spiritual practice shouldn't be up to discussion. You establish it and then you deal with the consequences of that. It is there to transform you. It is a rigid structure so that you can move despite your weaknesses that tend to... Oh, this is why the, the, the rigidity is there. Today I'm embracing the emotion of sadness. A very good friend was killed over the weekend. 
I understand the process of death the day my embrace takes silence. Sadness, okay? But the sadness that I was talking about is the sadness, well, it's kind of this one, but for your losses, your losses. And embracing silence should be in a way that it doesn't make you change anything. You abide into the path of liberation, despite your moods, the apparent momentarily desires. Sir, I have been telling you about my problem. I'm hungry for sex. And up to where I know that is a hunger of sex, can't be a spiritual person. What, what I do, I don't know. Because I didn't sex in my life, according to my thinking. So, always because I'm so poor and I can't live with... Well, first of all, to underline the beginning of the satsang, you are a prisoner. Thoughts, emotions, perceptions, they are the prison cell bars. Some have a nice prison cell, others have the perception of a very bad prison cell with bad conditions. So these ones tend to want to leave them faster or embrace it even stronger, but that's another issue. So whatever is there, if everybody, if, if it's the same nature, the only identity, so this quest for truth is possible for anyone that really embraces it. So, different seekers will have more or less different prison cells, different circumstances, but it is the same. It's the same. The characteristics of your prison cell determines the path you need to follow. In a way, defines the story. But that's it, because if you go to the center of the issue, it is all the same. So it doesn't matter what feelings are there, what obsessive thoughts and behaviors are there. It doesn't matter. Because whatever is pulling you to the world, it doesn't matter how strong it is. God is there, you can embrace God, God doesn't have a prerequisite, right? it doesn't have conditions for you to embrace him, it doesn't, so you can embrace God, you can hold on to God apart from all else, So there's a choice for everyone. But I will not go much into detail about this question because, my friend, I haven't heard any other things about your questions, about your spiritual process. Because this question that you are making here can be just from a, a seeker of well-being. And it's the same question. 
So I have to ask you, what is this? Is this a difficult, a difficulty, an obstacle for you to turn yourself to God? Or is this an excuse for not doing that? My friend, I will answer your question now. When in service to a master, in this example, preparing for a big event, may you please talk about how to be so self-centered and protect, maintain the purity while amongst so many beings who are excited, nervous, how to sustain purity. And if we feel impure and overloaded, what to do? Thank you. Well, first of all, when you're serving your master, it doesn't matter if it is for a big event, small event, visible, and visible. it doesn't matter. And you need to understand that. If you're being exposed to that service, if that master is exposing you to that service, it means there's something for you to learn there. And a seeker of truth is observing, always observing because he wants to know. He wants to know the mechanics of its own illusion. And he is observing in a sense that he is not looking for the dirt. No. He is embracing light. He is embracing love. He is embracing devotion. Focusing on, his, on whatever spiritual practice his master has given to him. And he is observing of that which comes as an obstacle, not letting that practice happen, unfold. This is what he is observing. He is trying to pull the boat forwards. And then whatever is resisting that movement, he will observe. Aha, uh -huh, there you are. And cut it. So, being able to maintain spiritual practice, detachment, and all these things in different different circumstances is very good but having observing the obstacles the arising obstacles it is also good because you can recognize them and see ah this is still here so if others are being um, anxious and all this and i'm being also why why am i being anxious what are the motivations that are still here this needs to be seen so that you can cut later. So everything is educational. All the time there is learning. So you're practicing making whatever the master has told you. And whatever comes to disturb that, you are seeing so that you can cut afterwards. So that you can work detachment or at least disidentification. Something must be able. And sometimes very little is, is possible because the level of intensity is too big. But whatever you can do, it will have a tremendous effect. Maybe not on this time, but on the next ones. So it's, it's not just about... Because purity doesn't need to be sustained. When there's impurity yet, still, then you, meet, you need to make the effort so that you can purge the rest. But if you don't recognize the sources of impurity, it's difficult for you to abstract from them and understand that all impurities, they need constant food to maintain themselves. And if you don't see them, you will not see your investments into the direction to maintain that. And apart from all of that, this is a question you should be asking your master. Because if you have a master, a guru, all questions are for him, no one else. Because if he is guiding you, He's the one who knows why he is doing something. There's this idea that 
Oh, all master says the same thing for the same reasons. And if this one is saying something, the other one is saying the opposite, one of them has to be wrong. And this is not the case. The master, if it is a real master, exposes the disciple to the things that he needs so that he can overcome whatever he needs to overcome. So, one guidance can be you go to the left and the other one can be you go to the right, depending on what is the need. And it is your master that knows why he has put you in that circumstance. What does he want from that? And if you're not tuning with your master, well, you will not be able to use the, those circumstances in the best of ways. He knows what he wants. From your part, you tune yourself with your master so that whatever he wants, you can give, you can understand. Or else you're just a prisoner to logic. And that is just maintaining that world. So if you don't have a master, okay. But when you do, then it's with him and with him only. <laughs> I have the impression that guidance comes to the secret of truth when finally he doesn't need it anymore <laughs> yeah when finally yeah it's abandoned for real and he is devoted to truth but yes and no Yes and no. There's many levels of guidance. And when you're immersed in so many conflicts, that is, when your decisions are, how do you say this? They are conditioned to a choosing process with conflicting ideas, this creates a lot of noise and guidance cannot come in a direct way or it's not understood or this is creating so much noise that it's not perceived guidance. But when you train your mind to obey, to listen, to wait for the guidance, to make any decision, and when the, the, the guidance comes, you just put it in place immediately and suffer the consequences, whatever they may be. Then guidance can come in a more clear and direct way. Many seekers don't have guidance because they don't have room for guidance. They don't really want it yet. If you're not surrendering to guidance, what's the point? Because you will be still in the way. So guidance says left. Your mind says right. Then you will decide. Should I go left? Should I go right? That means you're still in the way. So there's no point for guidance to be there. Because you will decide what's best for you according to the level of impurities you have. So the purpose of guidance is to take you out of the equation. Guidance comes. There's no thinking process. Decision process. You just do it, dive, then live the consequences. With this attitude, guidance comes in a stronger way. Stronger way. Or in case, when it is a master. Well, if you surrender to the master, if you dedicate all your life to the quest for truth, then the master can guide you. They hear this, that more directly. But you're, if you're not close, if you didn't surrender, how will he guide you? And for sure he will understand that. Wherever you are, that is the most important thing for you. So why bother? So there's a lot of 
there's a lot of issues behind these simple concepts, a lot of issues. Well, I think I've covered it, covered it all. Let's see if there's something else here in Instagram. No. Okay. <clears throat> so it seems that we're done for today. Next satsang will be Saturday, 9.30 in the morning, Brazilian time, UTC minus 3. Until then, make the best use of your time. Make it real. Bye.